for the last five years, I have, I have talked to over 500 married, divorced, and separated men. The book is based pretty much on the conversation I've had. Okay, um, a lot of times we hear, always hear about the things that men do wrong to women. But, you know, on the same token, there's not a lot of conversation about the things that wives do to husbands. Uh, he's got he's got a uh, heading the battle for head of the household. He will find that every decision that he will try to make will be challenged or overturned, usually behind his back. Did you did you uh, did you do that to your husband all the time since you thought he was stupid? You just like made decisions and didn't tell him about it. No, because he would always change anything anyway. He just whatever he wanted, he got. And if I needed anything. He still got what he wanted, and I just had to give him the money for it. Did he at least ask your opinion and then do something else, or he didn't even ask your opinion? It was just suddenly, oh. Uh, like, one of the best examples is, you know I got an Xbox after I got a divorce, and the reason I did that was because the Christmas before I left, I, I looked at him, and I'm like, you know what? Don't buy anything else, too, because... I want to, you know, I, I'm still thinking about maybe using that Christmas money and getting an Xbox 360. Ooh, good choice. He's like, okay, no problem. Fifteen minutes later, he's like, I'm going to GameStop. Uh-huh. He, he comes back with a $40 data transfer card for the PS2 so he can put his wrestlers from the computer out of the PS2. Uh-huh. Right after I said, don't buy anything else for the, the PS2. I mean, it was a stupid shit like that. There's a uh, section called "What Marriage, What Is Marriage Really About?" and one of the headings is about power. It says that women learn and understand that wives have the full support of the state legal systems, uh, so they can use things such as uh, 911 phone calls as as a weapon against her husband. Uh, what do you think of that backseat? Have you Have you done that before? Well, they needed, they needed to cover murder. Then my life would have been a lot easier, a lot sooner. Wait, so you're turning this around. You're saying... What are you saying? Help me out here. That if the, if the state really did back us up and could use 911 calls, murder would be legal for the whites. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, like, okay, you you and you and your husband get into a fight, and maybe things get a little heated, and there's yelling, and, you know, maybe you get physical with them. And then, you know, it's like, he maybe, uh, you know, there's that whole, you know, guys can't hit girls thing. And it's like, you can see him kind of getting ready. And then you're like, oh, if you hit me, I'm calling 911. Absolutely. Yes. That, that kind of thing. Oh, see, I had something better. I didn't have to worry about 911. I had Oblivion there. Oh. You really think Oblivion was going to let anything happen to me? Or he, he stopped in the middle a couple of times. Yeah. It's, wow. They, they, like, the, your husband really kind of got, like, physical and stuff? Um, or just yelling. He would start, uh, Oblivion would stop it before it got to that part. Like he would tell him to calm down and leave me alone. But he's such a dopey looking guy. He like I don't I can't picture him like really because like because he knew it was it was fueling me, and I think it was probably more so for me. So I didn't kick Scott's ass. Often when we hear the term spousal abuse, it's in reference to men attacking women. But what I found out, there's a lot of guys, a lot of a lot of husbands who are physically verbally and mentally abused every single day. Every single day. The guys that hate to go home because all they hear is nagging and fussing and complaining. And, and the guy is trying his best. He's trying his best to be a good husband, um, a good father. But you know what? It's never enough. Never enough. enough you know? So this book is pretty much telling the story from these guys point of view yeah what well, you were um you were talking about that that part um you know we were kind of going over the book today and the one thing i didn't say um was that uh you know if it's a situation as well where the uh the wife is physically abusing the guy the guys yeah. the guy's also not gonna report it because he doesn't want to sound like you know i'm a pussy my wife beats on me uh you know like he's afraid he'll be made fun of and all this stuff, and maybe, could, and could I guess it could get turned around on him, right? Where it's like I didn't Absolutely, hit him. It does. <laughs> I didn't it hit it him, does. but he uh, hit me. Right. That happens all the time, you know. Uh, matter of fact, I know personally from guys 
who wives are very physical, and these guys have called 911 on their wives, but once the cops came, guess what? The guys are wanting to get locked up. Yeah. This happened every day. You know, and there's a lot of females out there that have a full understanding of that, and, and they use that as a mechanism for control and power. Do it all the time. Now you you said that you uh, you know you've interviewed you know like five hundred different people. Um, some of this, I mean, reading this, a lot of this comes personally from you as well, right? I mean, it's not just other people's stories. I mean, something caused you to want to write this book. It had to be a personal experience of yours, right? Absolutely. You know, um, you know, you just get tired of hearing about all the bad things that men are doing. You know, <clears throat> men men aren't doing this. Men aren't working. Men aren't supporting their families. But you know, there are—I mean, there are hundreds and thousands of men out there who work hard every day to try to support their family. You know, guys that are accountable, guys that are trying to be responsible. But we never get the kind of credit due. And and I just think that it's about time that we, as guys who are trying to do right, speak up. Because there is a difference. Did you ever story. think that some of the guys that you interviewed for this were full of shit and lied to you? <laughs> well, you know, when you have gone through things that is painful, okay, it's kind of hard to suppress that that pain once that subject is is touched upon. As like for example, you know, if a if a person been let's say let's say a, let's say a woman been raped, for example. Okay, it's kind of hard to suppress that uh, that feeling and that emotional uh, trauma that you have went through if that subject is brought up. So, you know, uh, I've been around long enough. I'm 55 years old, and I can pretty much, uh, I, I have a pretty good sense of who's lying and who's telling the truth. Okay, you know, I have gone through a lot of things in my life. I have seen a lot of things in my life. There's not too many things that you can actually bullshit me on, mm-hmm. you know. And and pain, pain is one of them things that you can only suppress so long. <laughs> During the honeymoon, there's plenty of sex, kisses, breakfast in bed, candlelight dinners, smelling sweet, walks in the moonlight, wearing sexy lingerie to bed every night. For a nice guy, life is great. And then you turn the page and it says the honeymoon is over. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's, it's it, you know, it talks about, um, it, you know, basically one of the first parts it talks about in there is, uh, you know, especially when it comes to children. It says, often, right. often the first child is born within the first year of marriage. Mothers sometimes act like the baby is all theirs and the father is an outsider. Soon mm-hmm. after children are born, you will see a decrease in sex. And then followed by home-cooked dinners turn into fast food. You're fixing your own dinner. Lingerie becomes nightgowns and pajamas. And uh, children will be used for control, power, leverage, and security when the time comes. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> this is one of, once again, this is one of the, the common issues that I found in talking to these guys. You know, pretty much all all the guys say, you know what? The best part of my marriage was was the honeymoon. We had a great time. You know, like plenty of sex. You know, kind of like dinner. Walks in night in the park and holding hands and smelling real nice. But, you know, after the honeymoon was over, then we started having kids. It's like the more kids we had, the less sex I got. Now, now, I was watching Oprah a while back, okay, and, <laughs> and she had a program on there called Sexless Marriages, okay? Now, one out of four. Married couples are involved in sexless marriages, which means that these couples are having sex 10 or less times a year. 10 or, or less times a year. So you're looking at, you're looking at 25% of the marriages out there is involved in sexless marriages. Yeah. So that's less than, that's less than once a month is basically what that is. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much, and... I went to um, Dr. Phil's website to more or less, you know, check things, and it's the same. Now, now back 